Hey, welcome everyone. Tom here from Park Avenue Trading. I want to welcome you to another Lessons and Stories from a Chief Dealer. In this video, we're going to continue off of the last video where we have Ted, a client in the, the trading room. We're going to help him build a trading system that suits him, which is one of the most important factors. Now, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss any of my important videos and you didn't want to, you don't want to do that. So we've got Ted on the line. So Ted, let's uh, continue where we left off and talk about how we could build a trading system based off of GAN and Wyckoff. Yeah. So it's the trading room is, is awesome, obviously, but I, I definitely find myself rather than looking for my own trades, just waiting for you. It's like, when, when's Tom going to post something? And at some right. point, I need to develop that sort of independence of like, all right, how am I going to build a system that works for me? And I don't really know how to do that. Okay. So we're going to talk about some things that you mentioned in the last video where you said that you were kind of interested in GAN and you're also interested in Wyckoff. And believe me, those are two opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, but we're going to simplify GAN here. I've studied GAN and... You know, you really don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but I will basically do another video directly um, targeted for Gan and some of some of the things that he said. Now, he has said some quite interesting things and other traders before him actually said it. So um, I don't know if Gan pinched the ideas. I don't I'm not going to accuse him of that, but um, some traders have actually mentioned the same things that he mentioned. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about what we're going to talk about um, on on this video and um, how we could actually use one of one of Gan's powerful you know techniques, so to speak. So, um, and let's go. Let me see something. I got to share my screen, right? So, okay. So basically, what Gan really said was that the market turns on a nine. Now he's not the only one that said that. And if you think about today's traders, um, we talk about what's known as like round numbers, psychological numbers that people see and like people react to the numbers subconsciously and they don't even really know why they're reacting to a number. Well, you could think of these numbers basically as the same thing, a little bit deeper, okay? So what he said was that um, when you're dealing with the power of nine, okay, nine plus nine equals 18, eight and one equals nine. Okay, and if you go forward, you, you know, 18 plus 9 is 27, and 2 and 7 is 9. It's the only series that does that. Now, on the opposite side of the spectrum, it's going to equal 10. So these two areas were very important again, but the most important was the power of 9, where markets turn on 9. So now, and I'll like I said, I'll do another video on, like, you know, the square of 9 and you know, basically some of the astrology that Gan went into, which I think is really just over the top. But I think that this is a, an important concept that we we can we can use. So if we're going to use the power of nine in our trading system, and this is something that you have to be okay with, and you can sit and you can think about it and you can actually, I, I, you, you can actually go back and do testing on it. It's a very simple test to do is that we will use 1.8 big figures as our first level of support or resistance. We'll use 2.7 big figures as our first point of support or resistance. We'll use 3.6 big figures and so on as support and resistance. Now, how would you do it? What points would you pick? You would pick the most recent high or the most recent low. You'd also look to see what the trend of the marketplace has been. And that's basically just using Dow theory that, you know, in an upward trending market, you're going to get higher highs and higher lows. In a downtrending market, you're going to get lower highs and deeper lows. And there's also the ABC pattern and ABC equals CD and all that other stuff. We could talk about that in another video, but we'll just stick with this for now. So we'll take this idea and we'll put it onto a chart and we'll use the old, good old, I don't know, what, what chart do you want to use? Uh, as far as... Well, like dollar yen, like those. All right. You want to use dollar yen? Let's use dollar yen. Okay. Yeah. So let's go over to good old dollar yen. And let me show my screen. It has good old dollar yen right here. All right. So um, if we look, you know, this is a daily chart. Okay. And 
fell again was in a really nice word upward moving marketplace and now it's not really has not really changed direction because it's most likely a consolidation until the the low of like say one 140 goes then you can start to say oh you know um marketplace is basically you know changing its tone right now so let's just get rid of this um let's get rid of this so if we're thinking that dollar yen is going to stay within the, you know the range that's you know or in in within the con consolidation we could actually do two things with this we could take the recent high that we have of 148.80 and we can use those points that we just came up with we said okay if we're going to use gan we know that 1.8 uh should be support for this so let's go here 148.80 148 148.80 in 1.8 out you know that gives us 147 even okay so i put a line at 147 that's close enough 14701 um that would be our first level of support okay if i take this 14880 i got 2.7 out our next level is 14610 that's close enough close enough you know oh that's not what i want <laughs> alt h that's what i want 14603 all right so if we were using gan okay on the dailies all right and we basically picked this top right here we had you know a nice movement right to 147 twice and then the market kind of sprung up from it now Wyckoff has what's known as a Wyckoff spring or a Wyckoff hinge. And we'll talk about that in the next video. But let's go to like the uh, one hour chart, like, or, you know, and we can go back in time. We can actually see, you know, one hour, like the action at these points. So we picked this point off of the top of 148.80. Market came down, just touched it. Now, if we thought that was support, we could have done you know, a couple of things with that. We could have bought it outright, put a like a 40 point stop on it. You know, this is, these are, these are the rules that you need to come up with, you know, whatever suits you as far as money management is concerned. Or we could use, you know, a simple type of uh, Wyckoff idea that, okay, well, we got resistance here. We got resistance here. All right, so if I want to buy this thinking that we're going to break up through resistance, you know, I could buy the first break of this high, which happens right here, then you would be long and then the marketplace runs up, but you notice that it failed. So we you know, this this top was very strong. I mean, it didn't it didn't really continue on from this top. Now guess what happens again? It now if you if you're familiar with the forex confidant book, I talk about market, you know, tells and I do say that in a market tell, you know, the market will cover the same ground twice. Sometimes it does it three or four times. So when, if you understand the markets, you're going to realize that, well, okay, I'm out. You know, I basically break even on the trade or I lose a little bit. But here the market's not really changing direction, just covering the same ground twice. <laughs> and here's our point of support, 147. Okay. So you could actually use a, and we'll talk about Wyckoff hinge. And a Wyckoff hinge is very similar to Harry Williams' oops trade. That's right, oops. Okay. So what Larry Williams basically said is a, a bottom is broken, the reversal happens. Oops, I went, I got short at the wrong spot. I got to get long. Larry Williams, oops, Wyckoff hinge, same, same trade. So I'd have to say that Wyckoff came up with it before Larry Williams because Larry Williams is still alive and Wyckoff is dead. <laughs> so it happened a long time ago. Wyckoff talked about this a long time ago. So let's take this and uh, let's go back in time, okay? Just for, you know, as they say, the proverbial um, fun of it, of it all, the, the proverbial, you know, mental masturbation of it all, you know? You know, we're looking at a one hour trial. Let's go back to the dailies. All 
right? And we had a nice, I mean, we had a severe downtrend off of, of, off of this top right here, okay? Now it's easy to look at because you have the chart in front of you, but you wouldn't know when it was occurring, right? We, we can all say that, like you really wouldn't know, but you would, you'd want some guideposts or some signposts to start to say, hey, this thing is not going up anymore. I'm not gonna be playing yesterday's trading game. So if I take the high of the marketplace right here, which is one, that's the ultimate high, 151.94, uh, that was the ultimate high of last year. And I'm just gonna take an arbitrary now and go, um, 3.6 out. I'm not going to bother with the 1.8, 2.7. Let's just go 3.6 out. So it's 148.34. Okay. So let's bring this up. That's close enough. Let's get rid of that one. So when you say, <clears throat> you say 3.6 out, does that mean up or down? Or does it down? Yeah. Because I'm looking for I'm looking for support levels. If I if I thought this marketplace was going to continue higher, okay, so I'm taking the high and I'm taking one of the GAN numbers out, 3.6, 3 plus 6 equals 9. And I'm trying to look for support. I want to see what happens at that price point. Okay. Well, this is a daily chart. So you can see that, you know, the marketplace that now if I let's go one step further. If I go 151.96, that's the oh. 151.94 to be perfect. And I go 4.5 out. Okay, it's 147.44. Okay, so I, I'm here, if I go 147.44, that's close enough. That's the next level of support. This marketplace, one, two, three, four days blew through all that support. Then you could go 5.5 out. And then, you know, 6.3, 6.3 out, you know, to get all the different levels, right? But just our two levels alone here basically told us that, hey, now remember, once support is broken, technical analysis says it becomes resistance. Mm -hmm. Once support is broken, it becomes resistance. So this marketplace was telling us on no uncertain terms that it didn't really have the strength anymore, the momentum to go up. So we should look for some place to get short, a low risk short involved. And, you know, that's, again, we could use Wyckoff. We could use, you know, a couple of my methods, Forex Conf on out the trend line break, um, or you could use Tower of Price, looking for sale envelopes and all that type of stuff that we go over in the trading room. But your lines here basically gave you a decent indication that, hey, this thing is not that strong anymore. Now, if this was strong and you had this pullback here and then the marketplace reversed up, what you start to see is the bottoms would be using these supports to push us higher, constantly bouncing, bouncing to eventually take the top out and then create all the stop loss selling or the, all the stop loss buying at this point and push the marketplace up. Does that make sense? Yeah. How like you could use this 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 GAN idea that we have that a market turns on nine and we're going to just take 1.8 big figures or add it to a bottom or subtract it from a top to find resistance on bottom and support on a top. And then once the marketplace changes, you could actually see it with your line. Simple. No moving averages, nothing. Just pure price. Price and your level. Now we could do one more thing with this, okay? Gans major, <laughs> again, it's not, you know, other people that said it, but you know, uh, Gan got credit for it. He said that the price of a commodity or a stock, the price itself was the time factor. And he said, if you take the square root of price, you will find the time factor. Now, there are GAN purists that say you got to take the square root of price, but then you got to convert it to a degree. But I have found no validity in converting, even if you convert the price to a degree on a, I, it, I don't know what you do with it. He never said what you do with it. So I, I, I just think that, you know, just another rabbit hole that people fall into. But so anyway, so let's look at, let's look at this. All right. And let's go, let's clear my calculator here. 
And let me go square root of, let me move this over. I can't see it. Uh, we go square root of 151.94. And I go, where's my square root here? How come it's not working? 12. All right. So it's 12.32. 12. So it would be, if I'm looking at this, this is 12 days from now. I would mark this high and I would move forward 12 days and I would keep using around 12 days. Now, people, Gan Puris would say, well, it's 12.32 days. So, I, okay, so if I go, what's 32 days? I go 32 divided by 24. I'm going to get 1.3. So it's like, it's, 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 it's useless. Just go round down. If it's 12.5, go 13. What's what's the difference? You know, so 12, right? So if I take my measurement here, and, you know, this is totally, it is 12 bars, and I go all B. From this top, that's 12 bars, okay? So we're starting to see, according to GAN, on this day, you'll notice that this high is nowhere even near this high. And then this low is broken. This low is broken. This is the beginning of the real push, if you want to say. Now, if you, when you're looking at this without, with, without seeing the future, you still really don't know. So you got to start using like Dow principle here, you know, or, or Wyckoff principle. Where Wyckoff would say, okay, here's the shelf, all right, or, the, or you know, the, the spring level. Once this marketplace breaks through this this bottom, it really pushes down. Now we can go. Let's go. Uh, 12, 12 bars forward. Okay. Here's another twelve bars. Here's another gan basically time. So now all of a sudden you're starting to see. Well, you got this low here. So if I go twelve bars forward again. In the next quadrant, in the next, in the so this quadrant has ended, right? And I'm basically going 12 bars forward. What's the most important point? Well, that one is the the, the most important low. As you can see in the in the the new quadrant, it actually touched it. It kind of consolidated around it. When then it broke lower again. So using the time series, and then you could add all your levels. You know. Uh, you know, from here, you can go 6.3 down, you know, 151.94, 6.3 down, you know, 145.64. Okay, so let me just move this down for, that's really, I mean, unbelievable how shit broke like that. Uh, maybe I should stop looking at this more often. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not my trading system. So, but anyway, look, here was the six point. 6.3 down. Look at this push. Okay. So it's giving you, a, you know, and then you could also, you know, start looking at trend lines and trend line breaks, you know, using, you know, my stuff. If uh, so, like here, right here, you know, you had this here. Here was the trend line right there. And basically, if you look, if you get the three, three step ebook, basically said that this trend line break should be false right now. But then the other rule said, if you open up below the trend line, then there's a shift and then it pushed down. So the three-step book that we give away actually has is, is, a, is a good little technique to have next to you. So that you could read the checklist, you know, what is the marketplace doing? You just, you know, read the checklist and see, see if, you know, the, the parameters fit technically. All right. So, does that make sense to you? Did I confuse you more? Or, you know, is it something that you could chew on a little bit and start to test a little bit and, you know, yeah, see no, if I this can is start right a, for you? Yeah, I can, I can see that. So it'd be, uh, it'd be so fun the, to play with. Right. So the two things you're going to be testing is you're going to be looking at highs and lows. You're going to be um, basically adding or subtracting the 1.8, the 2.7, the 3.6, the 4.5, the 5.5, the 6.3.
okay, to get level support and resistance. You're also going to use the time series. You're going to say, okay, square root of price on off the high or the low equals this. I'm going to, you know, on, on the dailies, I'm going to basically move forward, you know, 12 days, 13 days, 15 days, whatever the square root of price indicates. And then of course, you know, you could take this and you can say, all right, well, if I'm, this is the daily is all well and good. Let me convert this to, you know, the one hour and actually see, you know, how this marketplace reacted on the one hour and where can I place trades, you know, between, you know, on the one hour. Okay. And that's not really where we are. I don't know where we were, but I don't want to take too much time, but you could actually do that. Go, go back in time and look at what happened on the one hour the four hour chart. You know, I personally use a three hour chart. I like a three hour chart. I just do. Um, it's kind of in between the one and four. I like it. So, and, and with trading view, you can use a three hour chart. So I suggest anybody that doesn't have trading view, you get yourself a trading view chart. If you want to look at three hour charts, but that's basically the first part of your system. The next video we can go over like Wyckoff, like what, 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 patterns we'll be looking for on white cloth. okay all right sounds good so all right excellent so thank you very much for watching the video please if you like what you see like and subscribe go over the park avenue trading get yourself um a, a three-step book to show whether or not a breakout is good or not and don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you on the next video where we talk about white cloth. cheers